Hi guys, and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. This is the third video in the beginner series in which we will be making a 2D apple picker game. Today we will cover making bad apples which the player must avoid, adding game over logic, and keeping track of the high score. Just before we start, if you find this video helpful, remember to smash like and subscribe because it shows me that someone is getting value out of my work. Without further ado, let's get started. To make bad apples, we will assign each apple a value, and that value will be added on to the player's score when the apple is collected. This means that we can give bad apples a negative value, and they will then subtract from the player's score. It also makes it easy to add things like super apples, which could be worth double the points, or something along those lines. To do this, I'll start by opening up the apple script by double clicking on it. Now, at the top, I'll make some space, and then type public int to make an integer that can be accessed from any script and call that value. For the default value, I'll set that to 1. That's all that we need to do in the apple script, so now I'll go to the basket script and look for the onTriggerEnter2D function which we made last time. At the top, I'll say int apple value to create a new variable type of integer which is a whole number and called apple value is equal to collision dot get component open angular brackets and inside that type apple to get a reference to the apple script close angular brackets parentheses and dot value while this is a long string of code all it's saying is take the other object which we collided with which in this case is an apple get the apple component of it, and inside that, get the value which we just created. Now we can say score plus equals apple value instead of score plus plus. This is the same as saying score equals score plus apple value. Now we need to go to our final script, the apple spawner. In here, we need to choose to randomly spawn either a normal apple or a bad apple. And to do this, I'll go at the top, right on top of the apple prefab, I'll create a new variable, public game object, and I'll call this bad apple prefab, and end with a semicolon. Now I will create a new function at the bottom, and I'll call this game object, get random apple to spawn. This game object at the start means that the function has to return a variable type of game object, which if you remember, is the type of the apple prefabs. Inside this function, I'll say float random number is equal to random dot range 0f for a float to 1f for a float. The f is important here as it tells Unity to return us a decimal number. This allows us then to say if the random number is less than some value, such as 0.2 f for float, then we want to return bad apple prefab, and else we want to return apple prefab, which is just our normal apple. Instead of hard coding this value in here, we can create a variable for it. So under here, I'll create public float bad apple chance is equal to 0.2f semicolon then I can copy this and replace this in here. Now in our spawn apple function we can say at the very top game object to create a new variable apple to spawn is equal to get random apple to spawn which is the function that we just created. Now in the instantiate function we can instantiate the apple to spawn. Everything else can remain the same, and now we can return back to the editor. I'll click on our apple in the project, then hit Ctrl D to duplicate it, and F2 to rename, and call it bad apple. I'll set its value to negative 5 for demonstration, and also click on the apple and change its colour to green so that we can see the difference between them in the game. Finally, I'll go to the apple spawner and drag and drop our bad apple into the bad apple prefab slot. Now if I hit play, we should be able to see it working.
the green apples increase our score. And now if I collect the next red apple, you'll see that our score decreased by 5. To make super apples, you would do exactly the same thing. Just duplicate one of these prefabs, change its value, and then go into the apple spawner script and change the get random apple to spawn function. But that's not what we're going to be doing in this tutorial. So now let's make a game over screen. I will be using a timer system to determine when the game ends. The game will last for 60 seconds and whatever the score is at the end of the time will be the final score. To do this, let's right click in the script folder, create a new C -sharp script and call this timer. Give it a moment to compile, then double click to open it up in Visual Studios. We will need to declare several variables here. So I'll start with public basket and then call that basket with the lowercase b. Public apple spawner, apple spawner with the lowercase a. And then we will create our function, which will be void on game over parentheses and curly braces. In this function, we need to stop the player from moving. Then we need to stop the apples from spawning. And finally, we need to set the high score. To do this, we will need to modify our other script. So I'll start by going to our basket script. And at the top, I'll declare a new public variable, which will be public bool for boolean, which can either be true or false, and I'll call it game over. By default, I'll set that to false. Now, in the update function, I'm going to say if not exclamation mark means not game over, and then we will do the logic that we currently have. So if the game is over, we will not run this essentially. We'll do the same thing in on trigger enter 2D. So if not game over, then put our logic into those parentheses. Now in the timer script, I can say basket dot game over is equal to true. Next, let's go over to the apple spawner script. Again, I'll go to the top and declare a new variable public all game over is equal to false. In the spawn apple function, earlier we said while true, meaning that the apples will spawn forever. Now I'm going to change true to while the game is not over. So while game over is not true. Now if I go back to the game timer script, I can set apple spawner dot game over is equal to true here. At the top, I will also declare a new variable. This will be public float game duration. And by default, I'll set that to 60, meaning 60 seconds or one minute. I'll also create a new coroutine, which I will need to be using the system.collections tag. Then I can create a new i enumerator, which you have seen before. And I'll call this countdown timer, parentheses, and curly braces. What I'll do in here is very simple. I'll simply say yield, return, new, wait for seconds, and in the seconds to wait, I'll put game duration, end it with a semicolon, and then we can call on game over. All this does is wait for the game duration number of seconds, in this case, wait 60 seconds, and then call this function on game over. While this isn't really a countdown timer yet, later we will use this coroutine to display the time left on the screen for the player to see, which is why we have set it up this way. The final thing we have to do before returning back to the editor is call the countdown timer coroutine, since we aren't actually doing that yet. To do this, I'll type void start, this function is called automatically at the start of the game, remember? And then start coroutine and plug in our countdown timer. This should all be working now, so I'll return back to the editor, give it a moment to compile, then right click in the hierarchy, create empty, and I'll call this game timer. I'll drag and drop our timer script onto it and reset the transform. 
Then for the basket, I'll drag our basket game object, which automatically assigns the basket script attached to that game object. And then I'll do the same thing for the apple spawner. For testing purposes, I'll set the game duration to 5 seconds, then hit play. You can see that we can collect apples and everything's working fine. And after 5 seconds, everything stops. Great. Now let's move on to the high score. To create the high score, I'll return back to our basket script and then change the int score to be public, meaning that it can be accessed from different scripts. Now in the game timer, on game over, we need to set the high score. To do this, I'll type int current high score to create a new variable is equal to player prefs dot get int and then pass in a string, high score, close brackets, and end with a semicolon. Player prefs is something we haven't seen before, but it's the easiest way for us to store persistent data in Unity. What this means is that we can store data in the player prefs that will save between games, so if I hit play in the editor, stop the game, and play again, the data will still be there. To see this in action, let's keep going with the script. So under that, I'll type if the current high score is less than basket.score, which is our current score, not the current high score. And if that is the case, then I will set playerpress.set int, which means we're setting an integer within the player press called high score, and I'll set the integer to basket.score. To check that it's working, under this I'll also say print new high score. It is, and then with a space plus and basket dot score to tell us what our new high score is. Now, if we go back to the editor, give it a moment to compile, then I'll set the game duration to 10 seconds, hit play. And this round, I won't get too many points. I'll just get two points and let the game run. You can see that when the game is over, it says new high score. Our new high score is two. If I stop the game, play it again, and this time I'll get a higher score. You can see that it says our new high score is eight. And just to make sure that it is fully working, I'll get a lower score than 8 this time, and it shouldn't set our new high score. You can see that the game is over, and we haven't received any new high score messages in the console, so it all seems to be working. I'll stop the game there, and now let's create a new text for the user to see their high score. I'll expand the canvas, choose our score text, and hit Ctrl D to duplicate it. I'll call this high score text. I'll set its anchor to the top right and then set its position to negative 300 on the X and negative 75 on the Y. I'll also scroll down in the inspector, then select its alignment to be to the right. I'll change this text to say high score is zero and then we can change this using script similar to last time. I'll go back into our game timer script. Remember that when we want to edit UI elements, we have to be using Unity Engine.ui. And then we also need a new variable, which will be public text, high score text. And now down here, where we are setting the high score, I'm not going to print it, but I'll say the high score text dot text is equal to high score colon space and then add player prefs dot get int and this will be high score. I'm going to copy this line with control C then paste it into the start function so that our high score text is updated when we play the game. Now if I return back to the editor the final thing we need to do is drag the high score text into its slot and now we should be ready to go. I'll maximize the game view with shift space 
then hit play to test it out. You can see that our high score says 8, which is correct. If I collect enough apples to beat it this round, you can see that it updates to say 11. I can keep on doing this and it should work. Then I can also quit the game, set the duration to 60 seconds like it should be, and play it. That's it for this tutorial. In the next one, we'll look at creating the actual countdown timer for the player to see. If you want to see more content like this, remember to hit like and subscribe as it really motivates me to keep making more videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.